Hey friends, how are you? I'm running a couple minutes late today, so thank you so much for your patience. I had a good friend stop by who I haven't seen in years who is out of town and I wanted to take every opportunity possible to spend some time with her. So thank you for your patience. Happy Friday. Welcome to Therapeutic Wisdom from the Akash here on Cosmic TV every Friday at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time and 11.15 a.m. Pacific Time. If you have not been to Cosmic TV before, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you want to learn more about Cosmic TV, which is basically like a spiritual and metaphysical Netflix, head over to, um, you can either go to the App Store or you can go to CosmicTelevision.com. You're going to find other shows like this. You're going to find um, courses. You're going to find films by conscious filmmakers. It's just a really beautiful and authentic community. So my name is Laura Mazzotta, and I am an Akashic therapist, which means I've been a therapist for almost 20 years, and I'm also an Akashic healer and spiritual teacher. So I am here today to talk about detaching attachments because I love talking about all things honestly, physical or mental health, that arise for us and make us feel like we're stuck, make us feel like we're having trouble moving forward, right? And so what I do is I bring this unique spin from the Akashic Records that really allows divine intelligence to give us feedback about what's going on here on the human plane, because we can be smart as smart can be, but nothing compares to divine intelligence, right? So Attachment is a really interesting topic, and if there's anybody that you think could benefit from this, definitely tag them or share it out. If you guys are currently live on Emerge Healing and Wellness, which is my Facebook page, I'm not going to see the comments live, so just jump over to Cosmic TV and place your comments there. Otherwise, I will write back to them um, later on, especially if you tag me, okay? So detaching attachments. Jay Shetty said it really well when he was writing his book, Think Like a Monk. He was talking about how the biggest area of suffering for us is attachment, right? And once we realize that absolutely nothing on this planet is ours, it's all borrowed. It's all borrowed from the universe, our children, our clothing, our home our water, our food, all of it. This planet, we're borrowing this planet temporarily while we're on it, right? So it's putting that in perspective first and realizing that it's not just about your attachments to other people. It's not just about your attachments to, um, you know, a special object that's really meaningful to you or your cell phone, <laughs> you know, or attached to being in a certain role like, as a mother or as a wife or as a partner, right? You can find yourself attached in so many different layers. And that's why I think it's important to discuss the, some of those layers because a lot of people don't think about the fact that they're attached to it. There's a lot of things we're attached to that we don't realize, like modern conveniences, like um, automatic plumbing. You know what I mean? Like the fact that we have access to clean water. These are the kinds of things that we don't realize we're attached to until they're gone. And a lot of times we don't realize the degree of our attachments until they're no longer with us. Can somebody do me a favor and just put a quick comment in the comments section so I can check to see if the comments are working? That way I won't be distracted and have to look at my phone. That would be super awesome. Because they're just... Uh, Facebook comments haven't been consistent lately. So anyway, so yeah, so there's multiple different levels at which we can feel attached or connected. Hey, Sherry, thanks, honey. All right, I'm closing this up. I appreciate it. Now I can just focus. So hi, Diane. Good to see you, honey. Um, so anyway, yeah, so attachments. Where do you feel you are most attached? One of the things, I'm having gallbladder surgery next for Thursday. And it's funny because I'm a foodie. I've always been a foodie. But I'm also very um, conscious of what I eat. And I've always been very conscious of what I eat, not only for my health, but, um, you know, it's just, it's become this area that, that I rely on, 
right? And and some of it is my health, yes, but some of it's also just my well-being, like my mindset and keeping my head clear and things like that, right? And so with this gallbladder issue that I'm having, I've had a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort in other areas. And I realize that I was a lot more attached to food than I realized I was. And it wasn't so much in an emotional way that you typically think of like, oh, I'm feeling emotional, so I'm going to go eat chocolate or I'm gonna go eat cake. Sure, I would do that every once in a while, don't we all? However, for me, I was really looking at it as part of my safety, you know, like part of my foundation. So I was relying on food in ways that yes, they were benefiting me, um, but they, they actually made me feel safe in some way, right? So just because something's positive in our lives and actually really good for us, hey Kelly, just because something's really good for us doesn't mean that we're not attached to it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to detach from it, but I'm telling you that your level of freedom and clarity and ability to feel light and airy and high vibe is going to be much higher the less you're attached to anything. So let me ask you, if you're attached to, let's say your dog, Fido. <laughs> so original, right? Let's say you're attached to your dog. And when you're with your dog, you're really happy. Let's talk about detaching from your dog. Okay, so we're just gonna emotionally detach from your dog. You're not relying on that relationship because that's a big piece of attachment is a certain level of expectation or reliance on that person or thing or situation. So you're detaching from your dog. Now that you've detached emotionally or energetically or both, when you go back into spending time with Fido, are you still happy? Of course you are. You're still gonna be happy. So that's a, that's such a great example of the fact that we do not need attachment to have enjoyment. In fact, what it does is it opens up space for even more enjoyment in your life. You're still going to spend time with that dog and you're still going to have a good time, whether you're attached or detached. So what I would respond to that with is if I were in attachment mode, and of course I have attachments, right? I have a human being. This is some, I'm a human being. This is something we're always working on. But, you know, so, so it's me being able to decide that I get to choose joy I might want to choose a different attachment in that moment. So it's also being able to say like, okay, here's my hierarchy of attachments. Like which one's highest on my priority list? These are my attachments, right? We all have them. And so it's just being able to be selective about what you're attached to, which means what you're really pouring that intimate energy in. Because like I was saying before, you know, what I would say if you said detach, but you'll still have fun with Fido is yeah, but it won't be as intimate, right? It won't be as intimate. It won't be as close. And I really want to feel like enmeshed with Fido because I just love him so much, right? So what does that show you? It shows you that you have an immense amount of love to share. It shows you that you have an immense amount of desire to be connected and not just desire to be connected, but I think a need to be connected. You love that sense of belonging. Layla, hi honey, how are you? Right, and so that's great. Now you have an awareness that that energy is in your field and that it's natural for you and that that's what you wanna do, okay? And then at that point, you can turn some of that love towards yourself. And this is what I recommend. If you're somebody who finds yourself in these situations, you're, I mean, you're going to because you're a human being. <laughs> So you find yourself in these situations and then you start to intentionally detach two things. One, you don't have to do it all at once. This is a conversation I was having with one of my clients the other day, which is where this topic came from because I thought it was something, I, I thought it was so helpful that was brought through from the Akash that I think everybody could benefit from hearing, which is that she really looked at it very black and white. It's like, well, I'm attached or I'm detached. And it's like, no, it's not like you're attached or you're detached. It doesn't have to be either or. It can be, okay, I'm attached. I get to detach in this area from this person, but I wanna stay attached in this area, right? I get to detach from talking about my career with this person, 
but I still want to stay attached in terms of talking about family, in terms of talking about health, in terms of talking about wealth. But this person over here, I'm going to talk to, I'm going to detach from these other areas, but I do like talking to them about my career. Right. And so you actually, I love this so much that you have the possibility to be able to detach without it feeling daunting. I know that when I was asked to release attachments, I used to get very nervous, very nervous because I was reliant on them, right? So it's finding that sense of safety within myself, finding that sense of reliability within myself and learning that all this love and investment energetically that I'm putting into other people or in this situation, I'm actually going to turn towards myself first. And that's the rule that I think is very helpful for you guys as a takeaway from this as one point, right? Which is being able to say like, yay, once you realize that you have that level of awareness of, wow, the reason that I'm so attached is because I have so much love for this person or situation or whatever, right? And so once you realize that, then you can start taking that and giving it to yourself. And then once you realize that you're an overflow, right? And all of that energy that you're giving to yourself is then overflowing, anybody can take from your cup right? And not from your cup, but from your saucer. Let's be clear. I don't want anybody taking for your cup, but anybody can take from your saucer because you're overflowing, right? So it's simply a, a realignment and a change direction of the energy that you're already putting in to these attachments. You've just placed them outside of yourself. You have this like external locus of control and external safety bucket, and aren't you going to feel more free? Aren't you going to feel more expansive? Aren't you going to feel so proud when you have the opportunity to rely on this within yourself and you don't have to rely on anything outside of you? Okay. So Diane says, I had to leave my doctor of 20 years. He's retiring. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sending you so much love. Honestly, that's huge. And I actually just wrote a blog that I'm just about to post. I just have a couple of fine tunes to do on, or a little bit of fine tuning to do on it. But um, to write about the medical system in particular, and that's really interesting that you bring that up, Diane, because um, I have felt the same way before, where I was in a mode where I felt desperate. I was like, I have to feel better. I have to feel better, right? And I was just like, oh, you know, and when we go in in that mindset too, we get even more attached because then it's like, I, I need this person to save me, right? To like keep me stable. That's more of like a clinging attachment, right? And so Yes, there's going to be a grief process for you around this, Diane, because it is an attachment. And it's really important that you bring this forward too, right? Because it's important for people to know that it isn't just easy to just cut off attachments, even if it's a physical object, right? Because we become so connected to it. Yeah, you feel lost. And that's why, Diane, I want you to feel the sadness some. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Let yourself cry it out. Let yourself write out all the things you're upset or angry or whatever about this situation. And then choose to go outside. Choose to do something nourishing or nurturing to yourself. Do some tapping. You know, kind of taking care of yourself in that moment. But honoring the fact that the grief process is also real. You know, like don't kick yourself because you've attached yourself to something or someone. And then you're like, well, you know, I shouldn't be attached to it anyway. So you know, you're, you're kind of like harsh, harsh with yourself, like just cut it off, you know, and it's not that simple. And the thing is too, guys, is that we, we also can't just cut off attachments like that. And it's our decision every time. Okay. Because sometimes there are energetic cords that connect us to that person or situation that we might not have conscious awareness of. It's really the universe that decides how quickly it's going to take for us to be releasing attachments to things. So if it's taking you a while, don't sit there and blame yourself, right? I want you to celebrate yourself every single time you reach this level of awareness about what's going on with you. And, and the fact that you know about it means that you're taking different, in a different perspective or different approach with it, and you're moving forward in a different direction, even if it's the tiniest baby steps. When you say you feel lost, Diane, again, a very helpful thing to bring up in this conversation because we can feel lost without our attachments. And when we're in that space that we feel lost without our attachments, it's because we've become codependent on them, right? 
That's because we have actually intertwined a part of our identity with that other person being part of our lives, right? We're, we've given our power and our stability to someone or something outside of ourselves. And so it's a really helpful to have that lens of awareness to say, oh, wow, I'm feeling sad and lost. And the sad, yes, I need to grieve. And the lost, that highlights that I still have some work to do around finding that safe space within myself, around being that reliably loving person to myself, being gentle when I release attachments, being compassionate instead of blaming or critical or self-deprecating, okay? So thank you for bringing this forward because these are all layers of attachment that make us hesitate to detach because we don't want to feel lost. We don't want to feel sad. And we think that that is a sign that we shouldn't do it, which isn't true. It's not a sign that we shouldn't do it. It's just that temporary transitional period because you're so used to being also either saved or reliant upon this thing in your life. But you're actually giving yourself a much greater level of sovereignty. And it's actually a very brave decision to release attachments. It's a very brave decision. It's a very mature decision to release attachments. And there's a difference between what Diane's talking about, which is I had to leave my doctor of 20 years. I didn't have a choice, right? He's retiring. So you feel left, which can bring up abandonment issues in addition to the attachment piece, right? Because someone is leaving you, which brings up that I'm not good enough. Oh my gosh, like I'm, I thought I was special. Though, and even though that might seem silly on a conscious level, that's what's going on in our subconscious mind. That's what's going on in our hearts. Okay. And so, but, but the, but the lost piece is the important one to focus on in terms of taking your power back in that area. Right. But yeah, we can feel abandoned when people, when the attachment is kind of taken from us versus us choosing intentionally to release the attachment for our highest good. They feel very different, don't they? They feel so different. So it's important for you to realize that just like when a wound is healing and you're putting alcohol on it and it's burning and it's like, ah, ah, right? You also tolerate it more to a degree because you know what it's doing for you. You know it's in your highest good. And you're like, oh, okay, I can get through that, right? So when you make an intentional decision to release an attachment, you know, you can tolerate, you're choosing to tolerate the temporary discomfort because you know it's in your highest good. Where when it happens to us or gets taken from us, I encourage you to really take that higher perspective. I really do to look at it from, well, okay, if I had chosen to leave, how would I be feeling differently? What would I be doing differently? Because then you're making your decision from an empowered space and not a, I've been abandoned and I feel rejected space. Does that make sense? So how are you guys jiving with this information? What kind of questions do you have? What area do you think, if you can just put this in the comments, what area do you think you hold the highest level of attachment? There's a lot of people that you know, they can always think of a person typically, but they don't think about like, oh, I'm still attached to my past. I'm still attached to my stories of trauma. I'm still attached to my role as a teacher, even though I'm not a teacher anymore. I'm still attached to getting my hair highlighted, <laughs> you know, because otherwise I don't feel pretty. You know, I'm still attached to makeup. I'm still attached to, um, even taking a bath every day. Remember, it can be an enjoyable experience and actually benefit us in some way, but we can still be attached to it, right? So it's being able to enjoy the bath without having to be attached to the bath, like reliant on it. Like if I don't get my bath, then I, right? So funny, perfect example. So I told you guys I'm getting surgery next Thursday, which means I have to be off of my supplements for a week. My supplements are what have kept me stable since I had sepsis five years ago. So I was very nervous at first 
thinking about going off of my supplements for a week. Cause I'm like, how am I get, how strongly am I going to be entering surgery when I don't have my supplements? And it's this, it's funny because this morning I didn't take them and they help me a lot with my digestion. Obviously it's the gallbladder that they're taking out. So that's the issue. And so I took, I didn't take them this morning and I did fine with breakfast and I didn't take them at lunch and I did okay. And I was like, see, I do not need to attach to the story that the supplements are what have kept me stable since sepsis. And they're not. The Akashic records have been the biggest mind blowing thing since sepsis, the biggest thing. And it actually disempowers me because what it does is it dismisses the level of, of effort and love and, and attention that I've given to my body and to my thoughts and to my mindset and my vibration. You know what I mean? And so attachment to stories is one of the biggest ones or like old beliefs. Attachment to money is a big one, right? Well, once I get this amount of money, then I'll be okay. I used to think once I get to this level of health, I'll be okay. Once I get to that, this level of um, this level of the supplement, I'll be okay, right? Like we rely on medication. How many of you rely on medication, right? Oh, I love that, Cassidy. Well said. Attachment to labels or identity. That's so good. That's very similar to the roles that I was talking about earlier, but man, that's really good. That's so true. Yeah, because we can all identify with a label. I'm a mom. I'm a therapist. I'm a healer. I'm a nerd wearing my Think Like a Proton Stay Positive shirt that embarrasses my daughter. You guys are so lucky on this Friday. I decided to stay casual and share this gem with you. Um, Sherry, what about a 30-year friendship you realize you're no longer aligned with? Yeah. You know what? That's why I say these are brave choices to detach, Sherry because that's not an easy transition to make. You know, that's not an easy, there's gonna be a grief process there. There, I, I guarantee you when you, once you started to realize that you were no longer aligned with it is when the grief process began. When the grief process began. And so you've already been grieving it um, in the background, if not consciously. So um, yeah, you know what? It's, it's releasing with love. Right. It's being able to say instead of like, I'm done with this, we're no longer aligned, just just allowing it to be what it is. Right. And allowing yourself to prioritize it when it's a priority, naturally and authentically. And if it isn't that you don't prioritize it and it's just naturally you, and then you just say, you know, we, it's just it, nothing, nothing personal, nothing intentional. The energy just shifted. And that happens, you know, we're all growing, we're all shifting, we're all made of energy. So we are not meant to stay the same. We are not meant to remain stagnant. And it's being able to realize, you know, there's nuggets that you've gotten from that relationship that will always follow you, that will always stay within you. There's energy within you that are, that's attached to the memories that you've made together that you're going to cap, that are already captured within your physical body, within your memory, within your emotions and within your physical body. And that's not going away. So you're always going to be carrying a piece of this. This person is part of your story, right? Which is so beautiful. Yeah, I, thank you for clarifying that too, Cassidy, because I do feel like that's a little different, like, be, like being labeled as sick. It's funny because when I first, um, again, right after sepsis, when I had common variable immunodeficiency, I, um, I joined a group with people that have CBID, so that I could learn more about it because I was just starting my plasma infusions and I didn't really know much about it. And I wanted to make sure that I took care of my body and I had a lot of side effects at first. And so I was communicating with people, but it was very clear. I, I couldn't, I could not stay there because too many people identified as being sick, you know? And so that's the other piece. It's not just other people can be attached to our labels. And that happens with my husband sometimes. And I have to remind him, I'm like, I am not just, I, I, I'm not just somebody who has chronic health stuff that I work on. Right. And I'm not saying he doesn't see me for more than that because he does, but he'll say like, well, you can't do that because of da, 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 da. Right. And he's just trying to be loving and protective and compassionate and, 
you know, for sure, his intentions are entirely in the right place. Um, but I don't have to take on that label either, you know? And so don't label yourself in certain ways that you get attached to, you know? But once again, you might not be able to go from, I hate myself to, I adore myself. You might have to go take your affirmation step-by-step. Step. Just like I said, when we detach, it doesn't have to be that whole jump to the other end of the spectrum. It can just be, okay, going from, I hate, hate myself to, I highly dislike myself, right? Then going from, I highly dislike myself to, I dislike myself and just keep going, right? These are, these, again, it seems silly, but I'm, I'm, you are intentionally communicating with the universe what direction you're going in and what you will, what you are and are not available for, to be honest with you, when it comes to attachments. And that's the other piece that's a, you know, that's helpful with your own boundaries of learning what you are and are not available for. That's going to help you a lot with identifying your attachments, right? Like if you're going to have an attachment to anything or anyone, make it be spirit, make it your higher self, make it God, right? I love you so much too, Cassidy. Yes, Sherry, lots of lessons learned and lots of loving and fun and connective energy stored. You know, you get to choose to release the other stuff. So anyway, any other questions that you guys have around attachment? I actually wrote, I'm so proud of this too. When I was a senior in college, I applied to be a senior fellow. And there were only, I think they only accept a, like three people a year to senior fellowship. And I got it and I was thrilled. And so you don't take any other classes your senior year and all you do is this interdisciplinary project. So I did mine between psychology and religious studies. And I studied attachment to God and how that related to our attachment to, to mother um, I created my own measures. I interviewed tons of people in the community. I collected data. I put it in. I did the whole thing. It was amazing. And it was really cool because it also showed that, you know, that our attachments to our mothers, to our mother figure in our lives is directly correlated and predicts our attachment to God, which was fascinating. And what I would love now, knowing what I know now, so I'm so much wiser than I was when I was a senior in college. I would, I would instead use the measures to measure attachment to God and how that impacts our other relationships. Make that our primary relationship. Make that what we're attached to. That unwavering, solid, safe, reliable being that is a part of us all the time, right? And when that attachment is real and when that attachment is intimate and continues to grow, the other ones in this world just start to naturally fall away, the ones that don't align. And that's what Sherry's experiencing. You know, she's done a lot of work on herself and, and been connecting and, and attaching even more and more to spirit. And when you do that, it becomes even clearer and clearer what is not in alignment with who you truly are. Okay. So I love you guys. This is a great conversation. Thanks for jumping in with me. Thank you for sharing your wisdom because I love being able to collaborate together in this community and just really connect on, you know, the more wisdom we can gain from the Akash that we can, you know, the more people that are in on this, the more we can pull forward um, to learn more and more about this space and what they have to share with us. So thank you for being here. I am not going to be here next Friday because I'm getting surgery on Thursday. So um, my goal is to be rocking it out the Friday after that. I won't dance for you. That might not be the best choice, but my plan is to be here. Maybe I'll just pull cards that day and just do some readings so that I can ease myself in just in case I'm still a little bit of a hot mess. But, um, but I'll let you guys know. But I just wanted you to know that next Friday I'm going to be uh, just coming home from the hospital. So I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful, see, I know, thank you. I love my shirt. I actually did, I'm not gonna lie. I think there was a tiny percentage of me that was celebrating being a little bit spiteful wearing this online <laughs> when my 14 year old is like, oh, I hate that shirt 
so nerdy. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me in my trendy little shirt. And I will see you in a couple weeks. Have a great weekend. Bye.